I'm a bounty hunter hunting the Eidolon. Interested? The Eidolon? What? You're kidding me, right? No. C tell me you're kidding. You're, you're not kidding. All right, I'll bite. Boys, hey, get out of here. Get us some refreshments. Hello, everyone. It's me, Campfluff, once again with another review. Sorry I was gone for such a long time. I've been pretty busy with finals and such, and I even got sick a little bit in there. But now, I'm back. And today, I'll be reviewing Star Wars The Old Republic. So, as you may know, I made a Sator vs. WoW counter review, and some of the things I said in that will be said again, but in this review, we're only focusing on Sator and with more detail. As pretty much all Bioware games go, the story is great and immersive. I don't know if everyone likes this, but one thing I find so awesome about Bioware games are the dialogue options. But not only can you choose what you say in Sotor, but they even take a step further than that. There are light side and dark side options for what you choose to say and do. For example, if you always choose dark side options, your character's face will begin to become more and more corrupted. Also, your companion's attitudes towards you can change too, based on what decisions you make. Even the side quests in this game have good stories. I mean, usually the main motivation to do side quests in MMOs is for the XP, but in Sotor you'll actually be motivated to assist the people of the side quest just due to its story. And not to spoil too much, but the main plot of Sotor is it's the Republic versus the Empire in control of the galaxy and your character is thrown in the middle of it. Oh yeah, and also it takes place like 3,500 years before the events of Star Wars Episode 4. Personally, I think every character has a great story to it, and eventually, if you can, try out all 8 classes to max level. So overall, the story aspect of Sator is extremely good. The amount of character customization in Sator is fantastic. Staying true to the actual Star Wars races and the right amount of customization allows for countless appearance options and a plenty of character diversity in the game. As for classes, there are 8 total, 4 for the Republic and 4 for the Empire. Each class has its opposite faction counterpart, but it's definitely not a direct copy and paste. And for each class there are 2 advanced class options varying upon the combat role of tank, damage, or healer. But even then, there are three different combat proficiencies for each advanced class varying even more on combat roll. Though, due to these, each advanced class has an option to be damage overall, making plenty of options for you to choose from. When it comes to the graphics of Sator, it can be quite opinional. When put on just about medium or above, the game uses the Mass Effect's everything is shiny way of looking. But when put on the lowest graphical settings, it looks more like everything is matte, but the game still doesn't look half bad. As for audio, the game uses a lot of the same music and sound effects used in the original film, which is really sweet. And then there's just the overall playing of the game itself. The combat in the game functions as most MMOs with the whole hotbar and attack button layouts, but I've noticed the attack animations are actually pretty detailed and cool. Not only are the commonly known Star Wars planets in the game, but so are many more from the expanded universe. And each planet has a distinct layout and unique details that really diversify the Star Wars galaxy itself. Both the Empire and the Republic have a central hub area known as the Fleet. You first access this place after your starting planet, and you'll find that you actually spend quite a bit of time in it, as it contains a lot of helpful and essential vendors to progress in the game. This is also where you'll find a majority of players, but I'll talk about that a little later in the social category of this review. I personally think this game could totally work as a single player game just due to the sheer amount of content in the game itself, but having it be an MMO makes it even more fun. Sotor features tons of flashpoints and group missions that you and a group of friends could totally have a lot of fun to. But maybe you don't have any friends who play Sotor. Well, they have you covered with Group Finder. Similar to World of Warcraft's Dungeon Finder, you can queue for certain flashpoints and raids and get put with other random people and can work together to complete the flashpoint. As I was talking about earlier, the fleet contains a majority of players, many different vendors, and a lot of the start points for flashpoints. Another social aspect of the game is PvP, or player versus player. You can queue for solo or group in PvP. And from what I've played in Sotor PvP, it's not that bad. Though I would recommend a strong internet connection if you are going into PvP, because if you don't, you might lag. 
And if you lag in PvP, you pretty much can say goodbye to getting kills and not dying. Also, PvP has its very own currency and specific med packs, armor, and vendors, which can be all found at the fleet and in starting rooms for PvP arenas. <laughs> In my opinion, Sotor is in no way pay to win. Sure there will be advantages to being a subscriber, but that's always going to be the case for any subscription based game. But also, there is an alternative to being either free to play or a subscriber, and that is preferred status. The way to achieve this status is by either purchasing cartel coins or by previously being a subscriber and ending your subscription. There will be a link in the description showing the difference between all three different statuses. The current plan I have on Sotor is $15 a month reoccurring. I personally like this plan, but there are a couple of other options on the Sotor website if that plan doesn't suit you. And I'll have free to play players often ask me if it is worth to be a subscriber. And to that, I have to say yes. I already have a lot of fun on Sotor, and being a subscriber makes it even more enjoyable. Currently, there are two DLC packs, Rise of the Hut Cartel and Shadow of Revan. Rise of the Hut Cartel is free for subscribers, and Shadow of Revan is $20 currently, both of which are pretty good add ons. Star Wars The Old Republic is a really fun MMO that I would definitely recommend to all kinds of gamers out there. Whether you're a fan of Star Wars or just MMOs in general, I believe Sator will deliver for you. So with all that being said, I have to say, Sator is great. You should definitely go try it out. And why not? It's free to play anyway.